Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on Monday, October 21st for the Board of Education monthly business meeting. Uh, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance. All right, thank you very much. The first uh, item on our agenda is the recognition of visitors. Uh, if anybody would like to come up and make a public comment, uh, please do so. We also have a comment section at the end. Uh, each person uh, wishing to speak is asked to speak into the microphone, identify themselves, and respectfully limit their comments to three minutes. Uh, all speakers are to conduct themselves in a the civil manner. Obscene language, libelous statements, threats of violence, statements advocating racial, religious, or other forms of prejudice will not be tolerated. Uh, any takers for public comment, round one? All right, with that, we'll move on to the next item of business, the student representative uh, reports from Madeline Larkin and Ava Rich. Uh, ladies, take it away, please. Good evening, everyone. We'll start with the Cornwall Elementary School good news. We are off to a great start here at Cornwall Elementary School. Our students, staff, and community are already busy with exciting activities and events. Our third annual First Responders Day is set for October 8th. Caitlin Millatz, one of our PTO parents, has organized a plethora of service providers from our local community to volunteer at this event. We will be hosting representatives from Cornwall PD Cornwall on Hudson PD, Woodbury PD, Washingtonville PD, Orange County Special Operations Group, Highland Engine Company, Storm King Engine, Orange County Hazmat, New Windsor EMS, American Red Cross, and the American Heart Association. They have planned a drone demonstration, a canine demonstration, a tour of their smokehouse, and more. This is a great opportunity for our students to learn about community safety and the vital role these organizations play. It will be a fun-filled day for everyone. On Friday, September 27th, we had our first Spirit Assembly of the year. We went over behavior and safety expectations with our students and celebrated our Principals Award winners for the month of September. September's character trait was patience. In addition to the Principals Awards, we have introduced a new Character Tree Award. Students are nominated by their teachers for exemplifying the monthly character trait, and their names are posted on the Character Tree outside the main office. They also receive a personalized medal and have their picture posted on social media. We have so many amazing students at CES. We love every opportunity to recognize their accomplishments. In the upcoming weeks, we are looking forward to our pumpkin judging contest, the fourth grade Halloween happenings, and our Halloween parade. Um, this is good news from COH. During the second week of October, the PTO hosted the first book fair of the year. It was a huge success in part because of the annual grandparents dessert which was held on october 9th students had the wonderful opportunity to showcase their school and their classrooms to their grandparents or special guests and then visit the book fair on october 8th and 9th students from coh had the opportunity to visit storm king engine company number two to celebrate fire prevention week the children learned about fire safety and had a chance to climb into the fire trucks Picture day was on Tuesday, October 15th. Students were encouraged to dress to impress. On S October 16th, the staff and students at COH observed Unity Day. This day promotes kindness, acceptance, and inclusion. Students wore orange to show unity and to send a message that no child should ever experience bullying. On October 18th, the PTO will host their annual spooktacular for grades two through four. And on October 25th, they will be hosting the first annual spooktacular junior for students in grades kindergarten and first. COH will be filled with many ghosts and goblins. During the week of October 21st to the 25th, students will participate in different themed days in honor of Red, Rib Red Ribbon Week. Students will learn ways to live a healthy lifestyle. The staff and students are preparing for the annual Halloween parade on Thursday, October 31st. All are invited. And now for the middle school. At CCMS, students continue to earn book coins for positive behavior and kindness, allowing them to access our new book vending machine. Mrs. Rakoff's sixth grade science class recently released their butterflies, and Mrs. Pagano's seventh grade accelerated science students partook in A Day in the Life of the Hudson and Harbor, sponsored by Columbia University Earth Institute and the Hudson River Estuary Program. 
Moreover, the fall clubs program is in full swing here at CCMS. Over 250 students are partaking in clubs Monday through Thursday, including Pokemon Club, board games, Lego Club, outdoor games, jewelry club, walking club, zoology, writing club, cooking club, and ukulele club. CCMS hosted its first rec night on October 11th. Fifth grade students danced, played, and ate in costume. Sixth grade students will soon participate in their first rec night of the year on October 25th, also in costume. Finally, on October 16th, students will participate in the 16th annual Great Pumpkin Run, and the 7th and 8th grade students' activities council will be holding a fundraiser for hurricane relief efforts. Next, we have the building good news for Willow Avenue. Willow Avenue has turned our Fridays into Dragon Pride Day. The halls and classrooms have been filled with Cornwall Green on Friday. Our monthly character trait for October is respect and gratitude. Students are showing examples of respect and gratitude in and out of the classrooms at Willow. Students in kindergarten traveled to Soane's Orchards to learn about, sorry, to learn about and count with apples. Second graders have been reading so many great stories, their favorite being the recess queen where the main character follows her heart and is kind to her classmates. First grade will be traveling to the Cornwall Library to spend time in the library, listen to a story, learn about all the checking, learn all about checking out books and different programs the library has to offer. Our third graders have been raising monarch caterpillars that were brought in from fields by their teachers and have released the butterflies from our monarch way station. They are on their way to Mexico. Third graders also have had their first of four trips to Black Rock Forest. During the first trip, they participated in Black Rock's annual far, fall acorn study and reported the data collected to the staff of Black Rock. Our fourth graders took a trip to the Hudson River to participate in a statewide scientific study of the river. They learned, that, they learned that at mile 57, Donahue Park, Cornwall and Hudson of the river is quite clean. Both classes had fun performing many hands-on scientific activities, which included checking the pH, working a turbidity tube, charting the tides, and observing weather conditions and water, te water temperatures. Students enjoyed the PTO movie night last Friday where they sipped on hot cocoa and enjoyed popcorn while they watched the movie Coco. We are looking forward to Red Ribbon Spirit Week starting October 28th and our annual Halloween parade on October 31st. And finally, we have our report from the high school. CCHS kicked off October with excitement, hosting the annual pep rally on October 4th. The event brought students and teachers together to show their school spirit. A highlight was the debut of the new Cornwall dance team, impressing the crowd with their energy and choreography. The cheerleaders also gave a great performance, engaging the audience with stunts and tumbling. Students also had fun cheering on their peers in games like dizzy bat, balloon popping, musical chairs, and knockout. On October 5th, CCHS hosted its annual homecoming dance. The turnout was relatively large and students enjoyed dancing in the cafeteria where the DJ was set up. Students also had the opportunity to visit a photo booth where they could take pictures with props and capture memories with their friends. Chips and beverages were offered in the lobby. Students are becoming more adjusted to community lunch. People are no longer running to the cafeteria to grab a seat and stealing chairs from tables. It seems as though everyone has found their designated eating area. After surveying many of the students who eat lunch in the hallways, they claim to prefer sitting on the floor instead of cramming into the cafeteria. There's a meeting being held to gather feedback about community lunch on Wednesday, October 23rd, which will include our principal, Mrs. Wilhelm, and various teachers and student government members. Students are becoming increasingly familiar with the drop rotation schedule. Although many have admitted to being late after mistakenly going to the wrong class, both students and staff are adjusting to the schedule, its rotations, and the timing of each period. Many clubs, including Student Government, Quiz Bowl, Youth in Government, and several others, kicked off their first meetings in October. They have already begun engaging members through activities, events, and fundraisers. Each club is fostering involvement and building momentum for the year ahead. The CCHS varsity football team played their final home game of the season on, on October 18th against Our Lady of Lords. Seniors from both the football and cheerleading teams were honored on the field alongside their families. Cornwall ended up securing a huge victory, winning 48 to 13. Go Dragons. Great, thank you very much, um, especially for that report in the high school. It's uh, a lot of changes, obviously, with the schedule and the launch show. Fantastic to hear um, the updates uh, directly from students. Um, as always, you're welcome to stay. We understand uh, you're busy with a lot of homework, so if you do need to excuse yourself, please uh, feel free to do so. Uh, next uh, item on the agenda is our superintendent's update, Mr. Dade. 
Thank you, Jim. I have uh, two recognitions uh, for this evening. Uh, first, our very own Jeannie Rose was recognized last week uh, with the Educator of Excellence Award from the New York State English Council. Uh, so anyone that knows Ms. Rose at all knows that she's a phenomenal uh, teacher in the classroom uh, who always advocates for student voice. Uh, and I got to see firsthand how she combines rigorous instruction uh, with providing support and making um, the instruction meaningful uh, for her students all day, every day. Uh, but she was also recognized for what she does beyond the classroom. Uh, she was recognized for her work with uh, the um, State English Council, as well as her impactful work with the Hudson Valley Writing Project. So congratulations, Ms. Jeannie Rose, for a very well-deserved award and recognition. Uh, second, I would like to uh, recognize our esteemed Board of Education. Uh, School Board Recognition Week was uh, recognized last week across the state of New York. Uh, we didn't have a meeting last week, so we're uh, celebrating you all this evening. Uh, so we have a small token of our appreciation in front of you uh, on your tables. Um, but it's our sincere thanks for your service, leadership, and dedication to our school district's students, staff, families, and broader community. Uh, too many often forget that you are volunteering your time uh, to dedicate your service, and we are sincerely, sincerely grateful. Thank you all. Thank you, Terry. Uh, next item on the agenda is the president's update. Um, I've got just a few notes. Uh, one, uh, just, you know, uh, we were here last month and I, you know, said with heavy heart, condolences to the Minnesota community. Um, you know, this, this meeting, I sadly have to say, uh, you know, one of our own graduates from last year passed away recently. Uh, condolences to the family and friends there. Uh, also heard this weekend that a uh, high school student in Middletown passed away, so. Um, our hearts go out to the to the Middletown school community. Um, sadly, there's no good way to transition from that, but um, you know our, our community and our school district um, share, share our thoughts um, for both of those students um, who passed too young. Um, in news, um, just want to give a few updates um, really for next meeting's uh, schedule just to share with the board where we're at. Um, we've got lined up and we're confirmed um, with Gabby Hewitt, with, um, I'm forgetting the name of the company, but the folks that did the uh, climate survey last spring uh, is gonna prepare a presentation uh, for the Board of Education, which will have uh, an executive session before next meeting. Uh, also next meeting, we will have uh, the Palumbo Group, our construction manager in, uh, to give us an update on the capital project. So just a few notes uh, there on business updates. Um, next item is our consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda permits the Board of Education to make more effective use of its time by adopting a single motion to cover those relatively routine matters which are included. Um, can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. And a I, second. When, when do I tell you if I want to pull something? After I get a second. Yep. You got it. Can we get a second? I'll second it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and anybody like to pull any items? I'd like to pull 10 and 11. And 11. Any other items? Anybody else? Okay, so we have 10, 11, and 6 coming out. So we will take a vote on 1 through 5, and then again 7, 8, and 9, and Sorry, say that again? Because is 11 the last one? 11 is the last one. Okay. So 1 through 5 and 7, 8, and 9. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now we will move on. We'll just take it uh, in numerical order here. So item number um, 6, Bass, discussion. Actually, so can I get a motion? So moved. Second? And discussion, Bass. Is your microphone on, Bass? Yeah. Thanks. It's been a while. <laughs> um, 
just discussion, like a little bit more, just for like the general public. I mean, what does this talk about here? Uh, so for uh, number six, it's a um, side letter agreement. Uh, the board already approved uh, version one, I believe, two meetings ago. It's for uh, coverage while Principal Palumbo at the middle school um, was out on family medical leave. Uh, this letter of agreement um, extends that those dates that she needs to take care of family um, through October 31st. Thank you. Okay, uh, so number six, all in favor? Aye. Aye, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much, that's nine to zero. Uh, and then 10 and 11 are really um, paired together, so we'll just take those together. Um, so if I can get a motion for 10 and 11 combined. So moved. And a second. All right, and Eleonora, you had a question. Um, please. They can hear, okay. So um, I'm sure it's perfectly fine, but there was very little information, so I was just wondering if we can get an auditor's report on that and perhaps a summary of the corrective action plan that was taken for that matter. Christian? Um, so let me, as chair of the audit committee, just explain. We had our meeting uh, before last, I believe October 8th, the last board meeting. Um, and uh, one of the things is we have an internal audit and they and usually there is a recommendation for any um, discrepancies or improvements and then we make issue a letter for how we were going to correct and address this so the the main finding and Harvey please correct me or stop me because I'm, I'm going to speak in general terms and I know that it's more specific um, that there was a segregation of duties concern so generally in accounting you do not want the same person who can authorize something to approve payment. Um, and what they found is then our payroll clerk was able to create a position using our payroll software and then also then authorize the payment to said individual. Um, now, there are other things that existed, for example, that just so people understand, I believe that the payroll is approved um, every pay period by, I believe, at least Mr. Sotland and uh, Mr. Dade. Both. Um, but so, yeah, so the point is that there is and another layer of approval that goes on. Right. Um, and so the point is that uh, this is a, you know, it's a classic segregation of duties concern. Um, and the question is whether it is worth the additional cost of having another person for an improvement of internal controls. And uh, the corrective action, I believe, was that any change from one payroll period to another, so any new change that wasn't existing in the period period would uh, create a se uh, separate report. And that report would go through the, uh, the process through Mr. Sotland or, and, or your successor and Mr. Dade. Um, and I think that was our understanding, and we voted to approve that in the audit committee meeting. I could also add, um, Eleanor, you had mentioned if you could have a re the report itself. The report is attached, all of the information. I don't know if you had a chance to. And the only thing I'll add to Christian's uh, excellent explanation is that it was approved unanimously by the committee. Yeah. Um, <coughs> just. Yeah. Yeah. And, yep. and, uh, I, think I will just add one thing is that, you know, we do have a very lean um, central office business staff, and I've, I've made this, you know, observation before. And while it's good to have a lean and efficient staff, that if there's additional duties, this might be something that we add to, mm -hmm. you know, in probably combination of some other responsibilities when a, the work for a full position emerges. And that might be just something on our radar for future years or future, uh, future decisions about uh, district needs. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Any further questions, Eleanor? You're good? Great. Thank you. Um, so all in favor then of accepting uh, item 10, the internal auditor's report, and item 11, the uh, um, the corrective action resolution for the same. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Another nine to nothing. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on our agenda here is the non-consent agenda. Uh, number one, new business. Yep, new business on the non-consent agenda. Thank you. 
Uh, number one here is the Nisba Area 9 Director Candidate Vote. Um, in the past, we've kind of just, there's only been one candidate in all of my time uh, on the board. Uh, this year, we have two candidates for this position. To be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure what this position does, so if anybody has any information there and wants to share it with us. <laughs> I might be able to provide more information, but stop me when uh, I think, um, so um, we all know what NISBA is, it's a federation, so we have it at the county level, so the Orange County School Boards Association, and then several counties are in uh, District 9. And this is sort of like the executive committee for the, uh, the state, and for a long time this has been held by John Redman, who I believe is from Chester. Um, at Flor sorry, uh, yes, Florida, you're right, I'm, I'm wrong, that's correct, Florida. And John Redman has been uh, serving in this position for a very long time, I think almost over 20 years. And so um, for those who are people who are involved with the Orange County School Board Association, probably, and probably people who have gone through training through them, I've met um, Pastor Williams, he's been the longtime um, president, not, although not this year, longtime president of the Middletown School Board, I believe he said at the last meeting 13 years. He has been the president of the Orange County School Board Association also for a very long time. Um, I'm personally impressed with him as a person, his character, and we all have the letter. Um, and I think that uh, while I don't know the candidate from Ellenville, um, uh, Pastor Williams did say to me that several Ellenville members did reach out to him and offer them his support um, and mentioned that at the last Orange County School Board's meeting. And I have no um, reservations about at least my personal support for uh, Pastor Williams. Uh, thank you for that. Anybody else have anything to add to this uh, discussion here, or should we just kind of, we have to essentially vote for one of these candidates, so we get a vote as a district, and then um, those are tallied up, so. I'll just, Please. Um, to essentially back um, Christian's perspective on Pastor Williams, having sat in on the county board meetings all of last year, uh, when he was the acting president, I found him to be a really solid leader. Um, open to dialogue, discussion, providing coaching feedback, and really able to take some very distinct districts that sat around the table and create a common ground amongst us and give guidance that was common, even though our districts are all quite different. Um, and I think that that was a really strong attribute that he has, that moving into this you know, even broader role, um, I imagine he'll take that talent with him and do an exceptional job. Wonderful, thank you for that. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, but, uh, Bass? I happen to see him every time I uh, do anything related uh, to NISPA uh, and uh, bosses here, uh, not too far from us. He's very involved, uh, like dedicated, you can tell. Uh, and he's often speak to people, I mean, he comes and introduces himself to you the first time he saw me. Uh, we went, uh, what, two years ago, Richard and I, to Albany uh, Leadership Convention or something, he was there. Uh, last year, not this year, I went to the NISPA annual uh, meeting, uh, convention, I guess. Uh, uh, he was there, and uh, I've seen him many times in uh, Bosses. So, very dedicated person. Thank you. Bass, just confirming, you were talking about Williams, John Williams, yeah. Anybody else? All right, I think we'll just do this by show of hands, um, and I'm just going to take it in the order on paper. So the first candidate is John Burns from Ellenville. Do we have any hands raised? We've got none. Uh, John Williams. Okay. Uh, Tiffany? Nothing? Okay. There we go. All right, so that would be eight to zero to one uh, in favor of John Williams. Um, Linda, I don't know if you've received that ballot yet. We got an email saying that you would get a ballot, the president would get a ballot. I haven't received it, so yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Um, next item on our agenda is first reading of revised policy 6640. Um, and Brendan, I'll let you lead this discussion since you are the chairman of the policy committee. Thank you. Yeah, so this was a, um, one of the policies that uh, required uh, a bit of changes, although the, the change was really just taking a section out at the end that um, 
Harvey deemed to be unnecessary. Um, so really going through a, uh, putting this on the, uh, the new business just so that everybody is aware of that before it passes through. Um, but it was taken out, the, the section was taken out, and I can allow Harvey to explain more uh, if he'd like, but simply because it was, uh, it was a bit redundant and didn't really apply to that situation. So um, more addition by subtraction. But Harvey, I don't know if you wanted to add anything else. No, I, you'd said it, it's very redundant, it just wasn't necessary. Yeah. And in, as you know, Jim, from previous policy leadership, we always uh, try to sharpen our pencils and make sure everything is, uh, is necessary without having uh, words in there for the sake of words. Absolutely, that's why we um, have, our, have our rolling cycle to review the policies to make sure that they're always um, up to date and current. So. Any other uh, questions, discussions on this policy? It is a first reading, um, so the, this policy won't go into effect until it shows up on the agenda next meeting for a second reading. Um, was that a hand raise? No, okay. All right, I'm not seeing any questions then. Um, do we need to take a vote on the first reading? We do need to take a vote on the first reading. So, did I get a motion? Uh, can I get a motion? I don't think I took a motion on that. We've got a motion from Christian, second? From Richard, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, thank you very much. Um, next item on the agenda, um, on our new business agenda is item. Jim, I'd, I'd like to make a motion, uh, just before we get to the last item on the new business. Um, I'd like to make a motion to add the discuss as a discussion item of the a second polling place for the Board of Education elections in May. Just add that to the agenda. Okay, do we have a second? Okay. Uh, let's take a vote on adding a discussion on adding a second polling place to this agenda. Um, I will just add, a re uh, I guess, in case anybody missed the email, that I received the request to add this to the agenda and ask the administration to uh, prepare data for us on costs and manpower and any other associated relevant factors and said that it would be included on a future agenda when we had that information. Uh, we do not have that information in hand, so I don't personally think that that would be a good use of our time to discuss it tonight before we have all relevant facts and information. Uh, but let's take a vote. All in favor of adding discussion about adding a second polling place this evening. I see four yes votes. Uh, and he knows we have four no votes abstention Eleanor abstains uh, so that has four yes votes we need to have five yes votes to carry a motion so the motion is not carried um, and we will pick that up at a later date uh, so back to item number three on our agenda here um, district wide Project phase three, uh, window bid award resolution for Cornwall on Hudson School uh, for the elementary school. Can I get a motion for number three? So moved. And a second. And we have a second from Eleonora. Um, resolved upon the recommendation of superintendent of schools and the recommendation of district's construction manager, the Palumbo Group, that Board of Education does hereby award the following bid for the 2022 Capital Improvements Project Phase 3 Windows Abatement Work to APS Contracting as the qualified low bidder in the base bid amount of $1,612,000. Uh, any discussion on this? Questions? Tiffany? Just a quick question. Is this within the parameters of our anticipated cost, or is this over budget, under budget, in line with budget? Harvey? Sure. <clears throat> so as a whole, the entire bid process for phase three was higher than we thought, but because the previous phases, pieces of the previous phases were under, we can do everything that we bid. Okay, we can't do the alternates. Now, speaking directly toward things like the windows, um, the windows came in literally about twice as high as we expected, but the paving in this site here at Lee Road came in about half of what we anticipated. So it washes out as a whole. The reason that 
we're not kind of showing this as a, as a global thing is because the lead times on the windows, as I indicated, are just so long, we don't want to be waiting. But it's completely doable within the confines of the budget. Follow-up question? Please. May I ask what the initial anticipated cost was in S compared to what it is yes. currently? Yes. Um, the street value is about $750,000, 750000 That may, uh, I, I'm not a mathematician by any means, um, but that's significantly more. Agreed. More than double of Agreed. what the anticipated and budgeted amount was. And the site work for this site for the paving was significantly under. Um, I, won't, I won't dispute that. Um, it's difficult to, I mean, you know, we're going to be having the Palumbo Group speak on this. That would be an excellent question, but it's very difficult to predict the, you know, the environment and what's going on out there. So uh, not to put you on the spot, I just want to make sure um, the significantly under for the paving covers the difference? Yes. Or at least 90% of it? It does. Okay. It does. And I'll add just um, for our new members who weren't here last year, we had to turn down bids for the windows at Cornell Hudson because the bids came in even higher last year because um, we bid through a contractor and all the contractors went to the same window manufacturer who gave essentially a we don't want to do this work type bid. So this year they went direct to a window contractor and cut out the middleman there to cut that price down. So um, any other questions, comments? Okay. Just, just to clar synthesize what I've heard. So Harvey, you would describe it. It's a lot higher than we expected two years ago, where, when we initially mapped all of it out. Less expensive than what we bid last year, and the least expensive of the viable options this time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because if you just hear it's twice as expensive as we right. initially planned, it seems right. like it's a raw right. deal. But in the environment of the last six months, it's the best we could do. Right. OK. OK, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Oh, sorry, Tiffany's opposed. Okay. Uh, any abstentions? Okay, so that was eight ayes and one nay from Tiffany. Uh, thank you very much for that. That brings us to uh, item F here recognition of visitors. Um, public comments from anybody? Please come and take the microphone if you'd like to share. Okay, uh, no public comments today. Um, next item here is closing comments from members of the Board of Education. And I'll start with Eleanor. Um, I would like to thank Harvey for getting that bid for us because as high as it is, it's an important correction that we have to make at Cornwall and Hudson. And Walter, I don't want to put you on the spot, but a discussion was made about the cost what is your opinion on the necessity of it? It's very much needed. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to thank you for, for doing that. Thank you. Pass. Thanks, Jim. I don't have much to say. I just uh, want to remind everybody uh, about the high school play, Harry, Harry Potter. Uh, forward to go seeing it. Uh, I don't have any uh, of my kids uh, being part of it, but still kind of, I mean, this production, something we should celebrate. Thank you, Bass. Carl? I'm good. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody today. Thank you. Thank you. Christian? Um, I'm going to take a little more time. Because um, I want to talk about something um, Know, as school board appreciation week and just a little bit about uh, what school boards are, why they're important, and that um, kind of the unique way they play in the American educational system. So I apologize because I'm going to give a little background because I'm going to guess not many people read the history like I do from my, um, on my spare time. So I think if you go around the world and you look at education systems, um, Jeffrey Hennig, about 10 years ago, who teaches at Columbia, teachers college, political science, says you would see American exceptionalism, which is that 
have a local special purpose, which means a government solely to do one thing, which is to provide for education, supported by a regressive taxation scheme, is a pretty unique way to run education. Um, and he says, you know, this is kind of only found in the United States, and it kind of is for a particular reason, because the United States made a decision that very few countries did when they set up their educational system. Most countries just basically set up a best and brightest system, which is, hey, we need to develop our country, we're going to have a system that isn't really open to many people, but we're going to provide a really tough education so we can have our highly skilled engineers, lawyers, doctors, et cetera, and provide for that. And the American kind of faced a problem, which is that they decided to do a more universal system. And the reasons were probably a lot of the time, which is that Protestant sects believed that literacy was important to salvation, so they were willing to get on board on it. And at that time, in the 1830s and 40s, people thought democracy required a universal education to work. And so they did something that was really, really costly compared to everything else, which is that we're going to try to educate it just about everyone. Um, and most of the countries didn't. And if you just look at comparison to the work of Claudia Golden, who won the Nobel Prize in economics last year, that the secondary education rate in 1910 was about 70 percent in the United States, and at the same time in England, an equally developed country, it was about 15 percent. And for some that decision, what they had is a, a higher skill, the higher productivity. In fact, as Claudia Golden makes a point, that is probably the major reason why the United States enjoys the prosperity that it did in the 20th century, that we have and continue to have the most productive workforce in the entire world because we educate just about everyone or we make an attempt to. But there's a problem with that, which is that that's going to cost a lot more money than a system that only educates a few people. And so what they did is they enhanced the democracy, they made it local because they thought that would be able to increase that, but they also faced a problem, which is that they knew that if they, they needed everyone to pay in, they couldn't just run it on a tuition system. And you can see that just looking around, there's a reason why Newburgh Free Academy is called Newburgh Free Academy, because it was one of the few schools that didn't charge tuition, because they had a wealth foundation that allowed students to attend without paying tuition. And they had a system where most people just paid for tutors if you had the money, and if you didn't, you didn't get an education. And even in Cornwall, the first public library in Cornwall was a subscription-based library because that's how you paid for things. And the people at the time knew that there was kind of a thing going on here because they knew that the wealthy would always opt out. And you can just look around at great, great examples. The United States after Reconstruction in the South, where they disestablished their pretty good you know, public school system simply because they wanted the newly freed people not to have an education. And that's the first time, as I've said previously, the word taxpayer came into political discussion because it became our taxes and other people's children. It happened in Latin America in the 1800s. And today you can see it happening in Arizona and Indiana where their cost of privatizing that system and the opt-out is leading to the point where Arizona is going to have problems paying for its water infrastructure. And you have to wonder, like, they're willing to go for a system because they can't pay for that and they're privatizing that. And so they had to set up a local system of school boards because that was a way of raising that money and making sure the public had some control over a large pot of money that was required for that. And the problem with education is that you're going to have this opt-out because some people can say, well, I'm better off if I have more skills than someone else. And there, if you have a system where you can have a, not, a, land, of one, you know, one, a land with people one eye, and they benefit from that system. And the other problem with education is that the costs are all up front, and the benefits are all down the road. In fact, the biggest impact on education for people is not the education you get for yourself. It is the education of everyone around you. That's the biggest, let's say, in a result that's been replicated many times in economics, that you have to basically, you benefit from everyone else's education more than you do from your own. But people always think that that's not how people think about it because they're not going to realize that for 10 or 15 years. So there's always this problem where education is going to get underfunded. So what Hennig said, well, what's happened in the last 30 years is that this American system, which was set up to you know, provide incredible benefit, is starting to fall apart. And it's falling apart because several things are happening. You're seeing education decisions being made at the state and, and, state and national level, sometimes for very good reasons. The federal government came in because of segregated schools. It came in because in the 1980s, most local school districts were basically warehousing their special needs children. It was a pretty bad situation, and that's why we have 
IDEA and a variety of other ES, uh, the original um, Education Secondary Education Act. Common Core was a bunch of governors who wanted to say they were education governors, and so they passed that. And what that means is that you go from, let's say, a government that's focused on one thing, which is education, to a government that has to start making trade-offs, meaning that if you want a local government, you could just put the school board under, you know, town supervisor, village mayor, and have them run it. But then it has to start trading off with police protection, roads, state universities, and all the other things that multi-use governments have to spend on. And that's where you see it breaking down because then they have to start making choices. We can talk about Foundation A being fully funded, but there's a bunch of realities for the state. And that means education starts to lose out, which is what the original founders were worried about. Um, and there's a other thing about it is that there's two groups that particularly benefit from having local school boards. They weren't created for this purpose, school boards weren't created for this purpose, but basically it's local district administrators and local teachers unions. And that's why you need to have an active school board because that is what makes sure the money actually is spent and that's why it belongs to the community. And Henning says that's what we're afraid of and he says more or less that's what has played out. And so if you treat the school board like a bunch of volunteers who really should not get mucked up in the gears of education, you're probably going to have a worse education system in the end. And so the point about this is that the school board is there to make sure the money gets spent or that there's community input in how the money is spent. Because otherwise the money can get siphoned off to other areas. And that's a particular problem. So for example, there's right now the Blue Ribbon Commission suggesting new graduation requirements suggesting the portrait of a graduate. And what do you find? A bunch of different organizations are already setting up businesses to sell this to school districts, which will cost local school districts and will not be spent locally. You can look at uh, many other things. For example, we had a person speak for us last year, making suggestions about technology. He used to work for the International Center for Leadership and Education, which sounds really official, okay, until you realize it's just an office in Florida, New York, and that it now was changed to model schools and it's just a branch of a publishing house. And that makes you wonder, and I can remember in 2008, someone from that organization saying, you see this? This is an iPhone. You guys are gonna love it. It's gonna make education wonderful. And we all know how that story ended. But that was by that same organization that, you know, we brought someone in who worked for that organization for 10 years. What that means is that education funds get spent and they get privatized because what we spend the money on is not in education. So here's the point. So last week, we got a pretty important item at 10 a.m. in the morning for a 7 o'clock meeting. can't talk about the details of it, but I can talk about the process. So if you get something at 10 a.m., and it's a pretty major decision, um, that is not enough time, because you're either expecting the school board to either be a rubber stamp or a lapdog, not enough time to read it, digest it, ask questions, get answers, and then make an informed decision. And that was the process that was laid in front of some of us. And since there was a characterization of that vote, that is not respecting the school boards or appreciating the school board. And so the idea that you give us a gift card at Jones Farm or a writing pad and treating us like amateurs and, you know, uninformed is not showing the respect that school boards have been and what they've done and why they're key, the linchpin to the American education system. Good. Thanks, Jim. Um, so first, thank you to uh, Terry and their team for the, uh, I, I do like Jones Farm, and so now I, get, I know where I'm getting. That's about a sandwich and a half, which I appreciate the half sandwich, frankly. People don't get, uh, people don't really get the most out of the, the gift card. They just let half of it die. But I feel like you got to go for the second half. Anyway, um, thank you. Uh, it, you know, in honor of honoring us, um, I would like to honor us too. So uh, I think they're generally we're, we're having a, a really good year as a board. Um, I appreciate everybody's time, uh, particularly our our new members. I know it's a it's a big hill to climb, especially at first. And I think. Uh, you've jumped in and, and contributed from day one. Um, I think our committees are doing great work. Um, Christian, very much appreciate the audit update. Uh, I know facilities has uh, a lot on their plate. Uh, Bass, again, with the, uh, the NISBA vote collection, 
uh, I know that's a lot of yeoman's work and, and you've, you've taken it upon your shoulders. So um, it's nice to get the appreciation from the district, um, but I think it's also nice to get the appreciation from each other. So just know that uh, I see all of you and I uh, appreciate all the effort you're putting into it. Oh, and uh, Bass, you mentioned Harry Potter. That's right, it's not too early to plug. That's uh, November 7th through the 10th, various times of your convenience, but uh, I would say get your tickets early because I'd imagine it's gonna be a hot ticket. That's it. Thank you, Tiffany. I'm sorry, I was off guard. I didn't think I was next. Um, I want to thank the teachers who are killing the game in our, all of our schools and really working so hard for our, our kids and our administration as well. Um, also want to remind everybody that though we had our last football game, home football game on Friday, we do have a really close Walk Hill football game on Friday, so please show up and support our Cornwall Dragons who have worked so hard and really deserve that support. Um, also for the community this Sunday from I think 3, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. is the Spooktacular on Main Street. Please go, please uh, support Cornwall and involve your kids. It's a really fun, free event for all involved. Um, also on 11-2 on November 2nd is the music bingo to support our, I think it's football, boosters I bought a ticket I don't really know what I'm supporting but I'm happy to support Cornwall and Cornwall athletics in any way that I can um, also as mentioned Harry Potter get your tickets get them quick because I think it might be a sellout it's super cool and it's a really exciting event personally my child hasn't participated in um, drama since her final performance was canceled the week before in the fourth grade because of COVID, but um, we love the arts. We're so supportive of the arts, so please get your tickets when you can. Um, and I personally am super excited and appreciative of our gift card and our stationery. I love it. I'm thrilled that it made my heart full to walk in and see this token of appreciation to all of us school board members. Thank you. Thank you. Richard. All right, so I think a good theme for tonight, as I was thinking about what to say here, is collaboration. Uh, first, I wanna thank our student reps, Ava and Maddie, for giving your reports tonight. Um, I may be a little bit selfish, but I'm a little disappointed that they're not here right now. But I get that they have probably more important things to do, but it's great to have them here and be part of the process. Um, that's my first point about collaboration that we I think all of us want to hear from our students and their perspective and I encourage both of them to continue to share their insights and their true thoughts on what's going on because it's very helpful to us and and we really want to hear it so great thanks to them I think it's a really exciting time of the year as well we're a little bit over a month into the school year I think students are hopefully starting to settle into their routines, their schedules, their teachers, their classes, and staff doing the same, right? And that also requires collaboration, right, between teachers and students and their families. So I just want to acknowledge everyone and um, thank them for making this school year great so far. And outside of the classroom, I've seen collaboration too collaboration, collaboration. Um, I recently volunteered at a few Cornwall football games in the concession stand. I want to thank all the people that volunteer their time every week to make that possible and to make that successful. And yeah. So the point is everyone in our community is the reason as to why our district is successful. So with that, have a great night. Thank you, Richard. Christine. Um, so first, uh, I want to double down on the congratulations to Mrs. Rose. I will say that she brought out writers in some students during uh, distance learning that didn't go into it as writers. 
Um, and so her passion and her ability to ignite that in students is really something significant. So thank you to her for that and for believing in all her students. I will just give a plug that October is Dyslexia Awareness Month. One in five people um, have dyslexia. It is not necessarily what you think, um, you know, what you've been taught that people reverse letters and things are upside down. It's really about being able to associate the sounds of letters as you're reading. It's, it's complicated, but not complicated. It can be remediated if caught early. So that is really my passion is literacy and young students. Um, but this is the month of awareness. So if you Google, I'm sure you'll find a whole lot of stuff on it. Um, I do wanna, I wanna also publicly acknowledge the loss of the students and especially the student in our district. He was a classmate, or they were, excuse me, they were a classmate of my, my students um, that graduated. Um, and I remember him fondly from when they were younger. So I just, I want to acknowledge that and send out um, sincere um, care to his family and his close friends. And um, I also would like to congratulate the dance team. If I understand correctly, the dance team was formed by students wholeheartedly petitioning and pushing and not taking, I don't wanna say no, but they didn't take the, oh, wait and see. Um, they were really, um, um, organized, assertive, and, and I also understand nobody was cut from the team. It's really very inclusive, um, and they do a fantastic job, so kudos to those students for um, really pushing for something that they believed in, showing leadership, perseverance, and inclusivity. So, um, you know, all the things we kind of hope our students walk away having the character and the skills to do. Um, and thank you for my gift card. I just realized I didn't spend mine from last year, so I'm going for way more than a sandwich, but I am excited to go buy something special. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I was gonna pass today, but then Tiffany reminded me. Um, Halloween event uh, happening in the parking lot right here at Lee Road Elementary this Saturday from one to four, the PTO Trust Halloween Trunk or Treat. Um, so I'm sure if you can go on Facebook and find information on that, but this Saturday, trunk or treat from the PTO Trust. Uh, with that, uh, thank you everybody for this evening. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Got a motion, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? No. Thank you very much. We will see you in two weeks.